Happy new breath, everyone. I want to invite all of you to take in a few deep breaths and feel the movement of chi that is sustaining you. At age 16, I committed a crime of kidnapping to commit robbery was tried and convicted as an adult and sent to the San Quentin State Prison to serve a life sentence. People in the prison system actually call it Disneyland because of all the unbelievable things that happened in there. But at first glance, you may have thought that I'm an engineer, a tech entrepreneur, or maybe even a local politician. This is what the modern minority myth has led us to believe. Whether consciously or unconsciously, the myth has led you to believe that Asian Americans generally work and study hard, put their heads down, grind away until they make it. Not only that, the myth points to suppose success of the Asian Americans and calls upon other minority groups to do the same. Be like the Asians. Don't complain how society has dealt you a bad hand, because in America, if you work hard, you will achieve the dream. As someone who has spent 21 years of my life incarcerated, what I want to tell you today is the modern minority myth is, in fact, a myth. And that is a barrier to progress that should be removed. In the history of the Asians in the United States of America, Two of the most notable discriminatory laws were the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882 and Executive Order 9066, the Japanese internment of 1942. The Chinese Exclusion Act was the first law to target and prevent a specific ethnic group from immigrating to the US. There's substantiated fear that Chinese immigrants taking away white people's jobs motivated the government to pass this racist law. The Chinese was barred from entering the United States until 1943. Executive Order 9066 allowed the US government to force approximately 120,000 Japanese Americans into concentration camps because of an irrational fear that these Americans pose a national security threat after the bombing of Pearl Harbor. Then in the mid-60s, sociologist William Peterson coined the term model minority to depict Asian American achievement in spite of the historical marginalization that they have experienced by their own government. It's true that many Asian Americans who have made sacrifices and worked hard to overcome the traumatic experiences and fought for their place in America. But Peterson's model minority concept fails to capture the complete picture. It states that there are many Asians that who are successful, but yet it's ignoring the fact that there are also many groups of Southeast Asian refugees who have fled their country to come here without a dime to their names. They're thrown into a cycle of forced migration, poverty, and for many individuals, crime, which can lead to deportation. Just this month, 43 Cambodian refugees have set roots down in this country, were deported and separated from their family. Does this sound like a modern minority? But so what? Why should we make a big deal about half true? For the most part, paints a group of people in a positive light. This myth is harmful. First, the modern minority myth segregates APIs internally. In 2016, California Assemblyman Ron Bonta's AB 1726, accounting for health and education in API Demographics Act, caused a rift in the Asian American community. Efforts to disaggregate Asians into subgroups promoted community tension. One group claimed that this was unfair because it seemed to punish certain Asian groups for being successful. While the other side claimed that 
It's a matter of collecting accurate data to provide benefits to the neediest. It's still more like battle among siblings. The second way the myth is harmful that it's caused APIs to internalize the myth and perpetuate a culture of the shame. The, uh, the constant fear of being targeted for discrimination and the idea that one is not American enough pressures the Asian American community to live to specific standards. Furthermore, it exploits a culture of shame that's ever present in many Asian cultures. For 14 years, my mother hid the fact that I was in prison from my relatives and family friends for fear of losing face. My grandparents passed away without knowing why I hadn't visited them for over a decade. Shame culture discourages open dialogue within community, which leads to members being shunned when they need the help the most. This leads to the third way the myth is harmful. When we look at APIs affected by mass incarceration and deportation, there's always no culturally competent services and resources to help change their lives. Less than half a percent of the funding topic dollars goes to support API organizations and issues. Asian Americans are not a group who are thought to have issues in our community because the stereotype that we are all successful. And of course, we usually don't have this aggregate data to justify resources because we are all lumped together. The modern minority myth has become an invisible, powerful barrier to progress in the API community. Removing the myth may seem like an impossible task, but I submit to you, it's a matter of knowing your chi. The chi that I'm speaking of is not just the breath and the life force that's sustaining our lives. It's culture, history, and identity. When I set foot in prison, I was lost. I was a teenage immigrant who did not understand how to read or write English. I was uneducated, had low self-esteem and no self-confidence, and made poor choices. But it wasn't until I learned how to read and write and think critically that I was empowered to start my path to healing. Culture. If I didn't understand the richness of my culture and the culture of others, I would not be able to appreciate our commonalities and embrace our differences. And if I didn't understand the culture of the shame, then I would not be able to understand the barriers that stand between APIs and solutions to our troubles. History. From two decades of imprisonment, I was forced to find my roots. I read and read, and now I read and read. If I didn't understand the history of the modern minority myth, then I would not be able to appreciate the sacrifices and the pride that many APIs have in becoming successful. In the same way, I would not be understanding the newer Southeast Asian immigrants who fled their war-torn country and came here with post-traumatic stress and only to experience more trauma. Identity. If I didn't understand my culture and history, I won't fully discover my identity, which gives me value and grounding as a human being. Qi empowers me to understand the importance of cross-cultural engagement, which helps me to build meaningful relationships with people and fight for racial inclusion and equity for all. Five years ago, I co-founded a culturally competent self-healing program in San Quentin State Prison that caters to API prisoners in California. Restoring our original true selves, roots, as the brothers inside name it. We model roots after an ethnic studies curriculum to explore the historical context of trauma, to develop cultural responses to trauma, and to reclaim personal narrative and unlock forbidden intergenerational trauma. This creates a nurturing environment to help engage people in healing, which leads to transformative justice. We must be willing to engage in a personal revolution before we can embark on a collective revolution. 
Let's discover our chi. Let's seek to know our neighbor's chi. Let's remove myths. Let's do something today. Let's take a deep breath and move forward.